This is the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, and I've been using it for a little while now, man. So go check out my unboxing since then. So yeah, this really does feel like the pinnacle of the traditional solid state smartphones from Samsung, where to the point where could it get any better? Does it need to get any better? Especially with foldables on the horizon and really picking up the pace. Man, this really gets a lot, if not everything right. But with my first impressions that I've been using and getting with it, there is still some things about it that I'm still not too sure about. But overall, wow, what a package this is and might really just be finally the deserving of that ultra name. This is my first impressions of the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Let's go. Hi, Ben from Lover of Tech. If you enjoy videos like this and you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're part of Team TLS, the Tech Lover Squad, so you don't miss any future videos on the channel. And before we go any further, I have to give a big shout out to Vodafone UK for supplying the S21 Ultra for testing and review. Check the links in the description below for all the latest deals that you can get on the S21 Ultra on Vodafone UK. As per usual, the support from them has been phenomenal and great, so definitely do check them out. Let's start from the outside and work our way in with the build and the design. And this is pretty much everything that they've put into here. We're talking about Corning Gorilla Glass Victors at the front and the back with an aluminium frame that really blends in nicely into that camera module, adds a lot of character. And this is what's really distinctive of the design of the new S21 series. As per usual, IP68 water and dust resistance and this phantom black color, come on, man, it is clean and it feels really nice too as well. But it's bearing in mind as we should be expecting since they removed it now, there is no headphone port. You do get dual speakers though. The dual speakers are really good, nice, loud and clear. Decent amount of bass in there. It is dual SIM, but there is no micro SD card slot. You heard my thoughts on it. I made a video about that and what my thoughts are. Doesn't affect me that much, but for an ultra priced phone, not to have it when their latest mid-range phones are getting the micro SD card slot still, kind of feels a bit hard done. So just really put it in terms there. Now look, when it comes to the feel of it, this feels like a tank in terms of the weight. It is well balanced though. It does feel well balanced, but sometimes I feel like when I'm using it, for a long period of time, if you're not careful, the weight just suddenly just creeps up to you from time to time. So yeah, you do feel it. It's got a bit of weight to it. It does feel like a tank, but I do appreciate the fact that they've balanced it well with the build and the design of it. Now button placement, the power button, spot on as usual. They get it right, it's spot on. But as always, I always say this, I wish the volume rocker was actually lower or on the other side and symmetrical to the power button just to make the one-handed use of it feel much more easier to use. That's pretty much my only point of concern when it comes to the button placements. But apart from that, the build and the quality of this, this, you can tell, you can tell like with the curvature at the back as well, for the size and the footprint, this is well managed. Another thing that is well managed is to sponsor for this portion of the video, IVC VPN. Now, as you know, a VPN or virtual private network is so important to have as it guarantees you a secure internet connection and online privacy by hiding and masking your IP address, while also giving you the option and the ability to bypass your restrictions for online services that may not be available in your country. This is where IBC VPN service comes in. Using a secure 256-bit encryption for the most secure internet connection online using the web. A no logs policy so your information is not tracked or sold to third parties. True internet browsing freedom by eliminating geo restrictions on websites and services from streaming platforms such as Netflix. But what really impressed me when using IBC VPN was that you maintained a fast and smooth internet connection when online and being able to watch some of my favorite TV shows shows and movies streaming such as Netflix in different regions, which I would not get access to as I'm based in the UK. So being able to stream in Netflix USA and Canada was a really nice convenience for certain TV shows that was just not getting access to because license and reason. Being able to connect also up to 10 devices, which IVC VPN supports on all major platforms such as iOS, Android, Windows and Mac and many more. But the best part has got to be the pricing and value. Link in the description below for the exclusive five-year plan, which works out to be no more than $1.33 a month. 
And thank you to IVC VPN for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Let's move over to the display. 6.8 inches. It's a dynamic AMOLED display, 20 by 9 aspect ratio, and it's 3200 by 1440p quad high definition plus resolution 120 hertz. Finally, at the same time, and it's using LTPO variable refresh rate as well. Now look, compare that to the S21 Plus, it does have a slightly curved display at the front and the edge, but I think, you know what, it's a little bit more manageable compared to how extreme the curves have been in the past. You do get a single hole punch at the top center, which is housing a 40 megapixel selfie and the haptic feedback up. Let me take a moment. The haptic feedback alongside the tapping experience, bravo. Bravo, Samsung. This is such a highlight and a joy to use when it comes to the tapping experience as well as the haptics. That is a very big differentiating factor to let you know that this is a high quality flagship product. And on top of that, the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. They've improved it. It's larger. And oh my goodness, how much of a massive difference does it make to the experience? It's near enough, so accurate to the point where I'm pretty much confident to say this is the best in-display fingerprint scanner experience I've used on any phone. And because it's ultrasonic and not optical, it doesn't light up in your face when you're using it at night. So long as you've got the muscle memory and because of the larger area of it, you can pretty much hear it every time it's accurate. The display, pretty much best of the best that you can get on a smartphone right now. And I'm so glad I've been able to do the high resolution quad high definition and 120 Hertz at the same time, even though it's using variable, it feels like it's running 120 Hertz more regularly all the time. Great display. Now, when it comes to the specs and the performance in the UK and Europe, we do get the Exynos 2100 model with 5G support. It is based on five nanometers, lots of improvements that comes from there. 12 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, and there is no micro SD card support. Say what you feel about that. I've made a video about it. You know my thoughts on it if you don't already. Doesn't hurt me that much, but again, at this price point, I think it still would be nice to have it, especially when the mid-range phones that are coming out are still getting it. Performance-wise, it's been really good. I've had no issues when it comes to the performance. It runs smoothly, no issues there. So far, this is looking like Exynos has kind of pulled it back and redeemed things. And I'm just saying it from my perspective, the performance has been good. Now, when it comes to the battery on paper, it's got a 5,000 milliamp hour cell, which is big, especially for the footprint of this phone, you expect it. And it does support 25 watt wire charging as well. But again, you do not get a charger in the box. Made a video about that, my thoughts on it. I don't generally agree with it at this price point, especially when most of the users that are upgrading don't have the necessary charger that actually gives you the fastest charging speeds for this new phone. Now, you do get wireless charging and you get wireless power share as well. So wireless charging, you're pretty much taken care of. Battery life though, it's, let's just say this, it's okay to not so great. And it's probably due to the high power draw of the display. Yes, it's using LTPO, it's variable. And also the fact that the brightness is really, really good. They've really cranked up the brightness to be well within 1,500 nits as well for peak. Sustained is probably gonna be slightly lower, but regardless, I think because of the display and just the overall power draw, it is okay to decent to the point where, look, you still need to be charging it throughout the day. Yeah, when you're pushing it. And again, you can vary, you can change the resolution and do whatnot, but if you're cranking everything as you expect to use it, Ah, yeah, the battery is just okay to decent. Look, still need to do a charging test to it as well and see how fast it recharges, but that's just another point of contention, man. For someone that really values really fast charging, where some of the competition are charging their phones from zero to 100% in 30 minutes, I really, really wish they went for a higher power output when it came to the charging speeds on there. But we'll do a charging test video if not done already. Those are my thoughts when it comes to the battery and the charging. And software, it is running Android 11 with Samsung's One UI 3.1. And again, monthly updates with Samsung across their devices, especially at the flagships as of lately has been really good. And again, everything you expect from One UI is here. It's feature rich, it's smooth, it's fast. I've not had any performance issues when it comes to day-to-day -day when using it with either multi-app, multitasking, as much as I'm not much of a mobile gamer as such, when I'm pushing it and I'm running multiple apps and switching between it at the same time or using multi-window, it's been really good. The software is really up-to-date and monthly updates 
has been excellent when it comes to Samsung. This is something that they stepped up on. Might not have the smoothness and the ultimate refinement that you get with, let's just say your stock Android on Pixel devices, but for a feature rich experience, yeah gotta give it to them when it comes to this one as well. Now, when it comes to the camera, it's a quad rear camera system. Main camera sensor, 108 megapixels, f1.8, face detection autofocus with laser autofocus assistance and OIS. Now, the ultra wide is 12 megapixels, f2.2, and you've got two zoom cameras, 10 megapixels times 10 periscope zoom with OIS and a 10 megapixel short range times three optical zoom. And you finally get 4K 60 frames a second on all the camera lenses. That's including the selfie and finally the ultra wide. Now, once you start recording in 4K 60, you can't then change between the different lenses, which I think is a shame. I think this is something that they really need to sort out and get it right. They've not updated it, so I don't think it's gonna come in a software update. Don't know why it's not there, but that's just something I just have to put out there when it comes to feedback. Yes, you get 8K recording. How much you're gonna use that, I don't know. The selfies though are really good. The selfie capabilities on the camera are really good. Yes, it's 40 megapixels, but it does pixel down to 10 megapixels, but you can take 40 megapixels if you want to. But oh my goodness, what really impressed me the zoom pictures, oh my days, the zoom pictures are on point. Now look, I'm going to do a proper camera comparison as I always do. If I've not done already, as you've watched this impressions and whatnot, but oh my goodness, the zoom capabilities on here really put me in a very, very good position and mindset about zoom. Yes, I prefer having an ultra wide more than a zoom, but oh my goodness, this phone, has made me a believer in true optical zoom. Take a look at some of these samples, man. This is a powerhouse when it comes to zoom, and I can't wait to actually test it and really push the camera to its limits. Oh, so overall, this is what the S21 Ultra is, an ultra phone. I think it packs everything to really so far justify the ultra name. I wish the battery life was better and I definitely wish the charging experience was better. For some people, they're gonna feel like it should still have a micro SD card slot in there. Yep, I'm indifferent to it, should have a charger and the charging speed should be faster, but overall, I don't see it getting any better than this. Yes, it of course can. But if this is the closing chapter for their solid state phones, especially now, which I didn't even talk about that much, it's got S Pen support built into the display. Whew. Yeah, I think this is a good way to really close it out and pass the baton on to the development of foldables. That is it. These are my initial impressions of the S21 Ultra. More to come when it comes to the charging test, the camera comparison, and the full review. Let me know what your thoughts are. Did you buy the S21 Ultra or any of the S21 series flagships this year around? What are your thoughts on it? That's it for me, Ben from Lover of Tech. If you enjoy videos like this, you know exactly what to do, man. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're part of Team TLS, the Tech Lover Squad, so you don't miss any future videos on the channel. I hope you're all safe during this time. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.